Yeah, so my dad and I just got off the ride going up Silverado Canyon. A couple days ago, I asked my dad, hey, you wanna go for a ride for me on the Pan Americas? And so he agreed to it. So I showed him one of my local roads in South Orange County. It's the Cleveland National Forest, which divides Orange County from Riverside County, basically. Pulled into the gas station here to, to fill up before we go on our ride. And a sheriff pulled in, a motor officer on his uh, BMW. And we thought we were busted. We thought we were gonna get tickets or something like that. but. Turns out he just wanted to see the Pan America as he pulls in. He's like, hey, is that the new Pan America? But yeah, I started chatting with us about the Pan America. We told him we were actually in the process right now of building a, a prototype or a police concept bike on the Pan America platform. And so I got to chatting and uh, he, he said he wants one. So he said, yeah, there's a market for it. Me and my, my partner, we want to get Pan Americas as our on-duty bikes. So yeah, kind of cool to, to see that from, from a police officer. And, Wanted to jump on as well. So we're here at the gas station. So we got three bikes here, here with my dad and uh, my neighbor Dave. We all got Pan Americas here rolling out. So a pack of three, we're headed up the Silverado Canyon up to uh, Santiago Peak area. So yeah, it should be a fun day, should be a fun ride. ridden it off-road right dad correct so I, I guess I think people probably want to know like your background in, in off-road riding obviously my dad's a very accomplished experienced rider but what are some of your first initial thoughts about the Pan America and how it handled off-road and all that good stuff well um, I looked at it and I thought wow this is gonna be a handful it's a big bike and uh, I've never ridden one but I've seen the video so I thought well if they can do it I can do it so off we went and uh, initially we rode some canyon roads to get up there to the place where the off-road adventure started. And I was amazed at how well the Pen America rode as far as ride quality, no vibration whatsoever. The brakes were very progressive, very smooth, and the tires, the way it tracked around the corners and stuff was very impressive, and I was like amazed. I enjoyed the ride up there, and there were some, you know, some canyon stuff. twisties with uh, big potholes. And a couple of times we were going a little bit faster than we should be, and it was an unimproved road, and there was just three or four potholes. You couldn't miss it. and. Uh, first one I hit thought it would be a lot worse now I'm not saying that you know it's impervious to potholes because no bike is but that's when I realized wow this is a bike that can can handle the off-road experience and rougher terrain so I really enjoyed the ride getting to the venue where we started the off-road Jeep trail. Speaking of tires, I think one of the big questions that a lot of people have is how capable are the stock tires in the dirt? You know, I think we know that they're pretty good on the road, but what did you think about how well they performed off-road as well? Like, do you feel like they were okay off-road or do you feel like we need to go to like a more prominent like knobby style tire or what do you think? Well, I'm sure any type of a more aggressive knobby would improve things off-road, particularly if you had some mud involved. The conditions were dry and dusty and I thought well this is going to be a handful but actually it wasn't that bad I was able to negotiate the, the road the turns it's not something like a, a full-on dirt bike at all you just slow down you take the corners they did better than I thought they would and I was actually uh, kind of surprised at how well they did by the end of the day I was actually having a lot more fun and pushing it just a little bit. I would step on the brake a little harder, the rear brake, just to feel the ABS and it would pulsate ABS into the corner just before the turn and I used that and the front brake and I was able to set it for the turns and coming out like second gear you could give it the gas and the back end would kind of slide out about five six inches with the tire spinning and you could you know steer the bike a little bit with power through the back wheel. You were and, in off-road mode, right? When you were in the yeah. yeah. And it, it was great because you could modulate the throttle and it worked really well. I didn't have any problems with it. And as I rode it more, it got better and better and I was having more and more fun. At first I was a little bit you know, nervous, like, wow, I better be careful. It's a bigger bike and I've never had a bike this big 
uh, in an off-road situation, but it was fun. We had a good time. So some of you may have seen the video that I did uh, when my dad and I went to the Rawhide course. And when we went, we both got to try the, the GS uh, BMW a little bit, but the bikes we showed up with was, I had the Husqvarna, uh, what is it, a 790 or something like that. And then my dad uh, showed up on a, I think. the T7, the Yamaha Super uh, Tenere 700. How did it compare to the Yamaha, both on-road and off-road? Well, the, the Yamaha is a good bike, and I bought it before the Harley came out. And uh, I took it to the Rahoid course, and I did just fine with it. It's 100 pounds lighter than the Harley. So, you know, you could attack a, a technical situation with a little more speed, uh, for sure. Riding on the road, the Yamaha seemed fine, did fine. My biggest complaint with the Yamaha is uh, it's a little bit high, even for me, cranking your leg over the seat. And this is coming from a guy who's six foot eight. By the yeah, way. well, that just shows you how old I'm getting. I just don't like, <laughs> I just don't like swinging my leg over really high seats anymore. But uh, I did get the accessory seat by Yamaha that's a little bit more cushiony. The Yamaha rear brake is about the only thing that I didn't care for, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that said this, but it's a little bit harder to modulate, and it's not as consistent and nice as a Harley. When you get the Harley on the road compared to the Yamaha, the Yamaha is a good bike it handles well but there's no comparison between that and the Harley the Harley is so much smoother faster and it went around the corners like I've never felt that good of a bike before that was on off-road in a street situation it just did really well yeah I think a lot of people think of the Pan America is a bike that you buy if you're just gonna be mostly riding off-road or riding off-road the majority of the time or at least half the time but I would actually say that even if you're a guy that likes that style of bike with a tall suspension that just rides on the road only the Pan America could still be a very good bike and if absolutely you're putting down miles um, I mean I would even say that the the Pan America does better on road than it does off-road Obviously it does well in both situations, yeah. but if you're a guy that doesn't really care to ride off-road, maybe you've never ridden off-road before and you just don't want to get into it at, at this point in your life or whatever, Pan America is still a great bike just to ride on-road only. And I mean, the amount of power in the Pan America, like on the open highway, is oh. just, I mean, you can pass traffic, no problem, put that thing right where you want it to be whenever you want. I mean, at 150 horsepower, 559 pounds, I mean, the thing is still a rocket on the road but you come across those roads like you know maybe you're going down to mexico or whatever that has or maybe just parts of the country that have roads that just the upkeep is bad great bike for those types of roads and if you yeah. hit the dirt trail fire road jeep trail or whatever it's a great bike for those as well where do you think the, the pan america's limitations are like um, there's obviously a lot of guys that buy the adventure bikes and they like to know exactly what they can do and can't do where do you think where would you draw the line as far as like off-road conditions where you'd say hey you probably shouldn't take the bike off-road in these XYZ conditions. Well, um, just to reiterate what you said, I could be perfectly happy commuting on that bike on a daily basis. It's lighter and it's very simple to ride. It has good gas capacity, wonderful handling. You could commute on it and be very happy. The thing that makes it unique in a wonderful motorcycle is yesterday when we went up to Santiago Canyon, right when we hit the staging area of the parking lot, there was a big sign and it said street license vehicles only. That's the key. So there we were, we had a nice ride to the area. We saw the sign, we're in full compliance we're street licensed and up the Jeep trail we went. So, so that's what it is. So someone shows up on a dirt bike, even if it's got the green sticker or whatever, they're technically Illegal. not supposed to ride on that road. And I don't know what the enforcement is there, but if there's a ranger or something like that, he could ticket that person and, and kick you out. So yeah, fully plated street legal bike. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. It worked out well. And they even said uh, no green or red sticker bikes allowed, which in California is, you know, dirt bikes and not street bikes. But to answer your question, I would have no trouble going on, you know, Jeep trails, logging roads, if you're in Northern California, or anything that, like a, a pickup truck or a Jeep and stuff, that would be absolutely no problem. You could do some types of single track. Uh, the, the type of trails I would avoid is if you had steep downhills that were very rocky and had uh, like washout ravines or divots or whatever that uh, a bike such as that would be a little bit of handful in like downhill with rocks. You wouldn't want to try that, I don't think. I mean, that thing, once you get the weight behind it and you start hitting the brakes, the brakes do a phenomenal job. Um, but it's, it, even with the electronic intervention, but still that's a lot of weight going yeah. downhill. And it's hard to stop that much weight when you have loose surface soil or, or gravel or And a rocks. steep downhill. 
Yeah. yeah, like if you get on a lot of loose rocks and stuff, like and you're trying to break that, that much weight coming down, like that can be. You a have lot to, to be handle. careful, and like I say, if you're going to be doing a lot of that, it might not be, uh, you know, the best bike for you. But it's just a matter of, like you say, you have 550 pounds, and if you're going downhill with rocks and stuff, you, uh, as the saying goes, you can't fool father physics. It's just part of the equation. There are so many trails and roads that just head off a nice highway that you can explore and go on and not have a problem with uh, that makes it wonderful and they don't allow dirt bikes off-road bikes because they don't want that problem but they can't keep street licensed vehicles excluded off of there and that's where you have your opportunity on uh, Pan America. Two, three. Oh. <laughs> Pan, Pan America. Yeah. Well, the breakaway grip did its job. Yeah. But yeah, you gotta get a new grip now. <laughs> you good? Yeah. yeah, I just need to move. It's like on this. I I've broken the lever, and then this thing just has to come back in. You can take care of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Right yeah, and I asked her, are you okay? And she's all, yeah, yeah, you know, and she's like <laughs> halfway up. Was she still on the ground when you got there? Yeah. yeah. So when she saw you come around the corner and you spooked her and you made a crash? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you just kind of left there and didn't help? <laughs> no, I said, are you okay? And she says, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. I so I went on. I figure she was just embarrassed because she went down at like five miles an hour. Oh yeah. Uh, very <laughs> slow. She just grabbed the front brake when she saw me and spooked her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to stop and help her and, and my bike fell over. Yeah, Dave's bike tipped over. It sucks. Good. No lever broke right on the front. That's it. This is good. This worked. Yeah, so. Looks like the brush guard did its job. Yeah, that's right. Hand guard too. I mean, it broke the lever exactly what you'd think. Right on the edge. Yeah, I'll put there's both the lever, yeah. That's right. Yeah, but no, no tank or paint damage. Nope. I kept my leg in there. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, it's hot. It's hot. That was fun though, going that up there. Fun. Yeah. What would you rate one through 10, the, the trail that we did yesterday? As far as scenery, it was hotter than hell by the way <sighs> yesterday, but it hot. if it was 20 degrees cooler, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. But what would you rate the, the trail? And we, we actually, there's a lot of trail that we kind of left untouched as well. We started to head down a trail once we got to a peak where I was flying my drone. And uh, it was like 20 more miles, I think, is what I mapped it out to be. So well, we have more exploring to do up that same area, but what, what would you rate that trail one through 10? As, as far as difficulty like, or fun? Um, I would say fun, your overall enjoyment, scenery, plus uh, how how well that trail is suited to the Pan America on like a fun level. What you, would you think of that trail selection for Pan America wise? For a Pan America, that's a, that's a good selection because it's well within the capabilities of the bike. You know, there was some uphill and downhill that uh, you had to pay attention to, but I didn't have any trouble with it. As far as funnest, most enjoyable trails I've ever been on, you know, that's probably a five or a six. Yeah, where would you want to take this bike in the future? as far as like maybe places you want to go or places you've been before that you'd like to take this bike to? It would be a great bike if you wanted to travel down in Mexico. I know 
hardly anybody goes to Mexico that much, and if they do, they go into really remote places. But you could get on that bike and take a trip and go hundreds of miles, get there without any drama. It's a solid, reliable bike. It has good gas capacity, and yet you could ride the rough Baja-type trails down there. It would be good there. We were kind of in the mountains, somewhat higher elevation. I went up to the Paiute Range in Utah between Beaver, Marysville, Circleville a week prior to this. Most of those trails are the kind of trails that people are riding side-by-sides on and like, you know, rhino-type vehicles. And it would do just fine there. It would do just fine now. Yeah, I wouldn't put it on some of the trails that are most difficult rating with the steep downhills <laughs> with rocks. Avoid those, but 80% of the trails you could definitely take take the, the Harley on and have a wonderful time, travel good distances. And then as you rode the trail, pop out on a highway, go get some lunch, see the sights in the local town, and then get back on the trail and enjoy going through the trees and have a wonderful off-road experience without all the cars, noise, traffic, and just you know get away from everything. It's yeah. wonderful. I think just what you said, Dad, is one of the main advantages of an uh, adventure touring bike is is you don't have to hassle with all the trucks to tow your dirt bikes, the trailering to tow your stuff somewhere. You jump on your bike out of the garage and you just ride to your, your destination, basically, then you can enjoy the off-road. I feel like that's kind of like the main advantage of the adventure yeah. touring bike. What other advantages, maybe you have the same opinion as I do, what are some of the main advantages of adventure touring bike, especially as it fits into the Harley-Davidson lineup? It's the versatility. And uh, if you take the bike somewhere to like camping or everything, you can get on, you can explore, you can go everywhere legally, and you don't have to worry about being uh, excluded because it's you know a dirt bike and not licensed for the street. So basically, the bike will take you there, uh, not as fast as a full-blown dirt bike, but usually you can get there without much uh, problem or worry. You just take your time, enjoy the scenery, and let the bike bring you the enjoyment, let the bike handle the rough conditions, and it'll do it. It's a good solution to the situation of wanting to explore and not having to comply with the off-road laws and bylaws and restrictions. Yeah. All right, guys, well, that about sums it up. If you want to see more videos with uh, Jerry Laidlaw uh, in there riding with us, uh, let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, we definitely have some more Pan America action coming your way. And let us know, too, in the comments if you think Jerry should uh, purchase a Pan America of his own and uh, <laughs> go on some more rides. Obviously, I just bought one myself. I definitely look forward to exploring more of the Southern California area. I, I think I, saw, I heard a statistic the other day that there's more unpaved roads in America than there are paved roads. So, you know, That's really right. the, the possibilities are endless with this bike. And so I look forward to exploring new roads. I think maybe next time, Dad, you'll have to take me up to uh, your neck of the woods and we'll have to explore out there a little bit. Find some roads that, that the Pan America can go on that maybe you wouldn't take your regular Harley. Yeah, we can do it. There's some places up there that uh, I've already thought about. Have to keep it a secret, though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Later.